I know, I know. I'm, I'm interrupting your time. I know, I know. Why can't that preacher be quiet, right? We're having such a good time. Hey, you know what? We're starting a new series today. It's just a, a short series. It's about three weeks long, and, and, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. We're going to talk about worry. And, and that's perfect because the truth is if there's anything that all of us have in common, I mean, everybody has this one thing in common, and that is the fact that we all worry. We worry about big things. We worry about small things. We just worry. As a matter of fact, if, if worry were an Olympic sport, some of you would win the gold medal. Right? Right? It's just the way it is. I mean, it's, it's just, the, just the, the, the way things pan out. Now, some of you, I, I had some, somebody come up to me earlier today and say, haven't we already talked about this? And the truth is, is that, yes, we talked about this. Matter of fact, I talked about this subject four years ago. It was almost four years to the date. It was August of 2011, but it was, it was four years ago. And here's the great thing about worry is that I can talk about it every week. And, and, and truthfully, I'd still be able to hit you right in the heart. Right? Because, because no matter what, and I know this, you know, no matter what I say today, and, and I'm hoping I'm wrong, but no matter what I say today, you're still going to walk away and say, that's really nice, Pastor. And then you're going to go home and you're going to worry. And, and, and that, that, that's just the way it is. Well, I, I, like I said, I talked about this four years ago, and, and I remember because my, my daughter, Jessie, she came up to me and she says, Dad, what are you preaching on this weekend? Are you starting a new series? I said, yeah. She says, what are you going to preach on? I said, I'm going to preach on worry. She got quiet. She looked at me and she says, are you worried about it? <laughs> My daughter knows me so well because, because she knows. She knows that I am very worried about this. I, I'm, I'm worried about it being biblical. I'm worried about it being applicable. I'm worried about it being engaging. Will it engage the folks that are around here? Will it be the right mixture of both funny and serious? Will people kind of walk away laughing and yet going, wow. I never thought about that. But if I were to be totally honest, because those are kind of noble things, right? Those are things that, you know, if I say I'm worried about it being biblical, everybody goes, yeah, that's the way, way to go, Pastor. Or if, if, if I say I'm worried about it being applicable, but if I were to be totally honest with you, I'm worried that you won't like the message. And if I were to be completely transparent, I'm worried that you won't like me. Now, I, I'm not saying that because I'm, I'm wanting to solicit some sort of encouragement from you. I'm not looking for you to come to me and say, oh, pastor, you're the best. I, that's not what I'm looking for, though I'll take it. But that, that's not what I'm looking for. Listen, listen. I'm saying that because I want you to understand that all of us worry about little things. And some of you right now, because I just told you I'm worried about you liking me, you're worried about me being worried. And some of you are sitting there going, that's just silly. That is just absolutely stupid. I cannot believe that he worries about something so small. He ought to just get over it and get over himself and just move on, right? And that's the other thing about worry is that worry, worry is one of those things that, that if it's something you worry about, it's really, really serious. But if it's something that somebody else worries about, it's just silly, right? I mean, you, you've, you've heard the difference between major surgery and minor surgery, right? The difference between major surgery and minor surgery is that major surgery is whenever surgery is happening to you. Minor surgery is whenever it's happened to, you, to somebody else, right? So, so it's the same thing. Whenever you worry about something and somebody says, don't worry about that. That's just silly. You go, yeah, right. Thanks. Thanks for the advice, right? So, so the truth is, is that all of us, all of us worry. And, and, and the thing that I've discovered about worry is that worry reveals something about us. As a matter of fact, worry reveals the real us. This last week, I had the opportunity, the, the entire staff, all the pastoral staff, we went. And some of you watched some of the things that happened on Facebook, and you kind of laughed and everything. Some of you liked it and things like that. But, but we went into Portland, and we spent three days together. And we just had a fantastic time, just a great time getting to know one another. But one of the things that I discovered is I was kind of watching, you know, different things and the way people were reacting and the, and, and the things that people would worry about or the things that would kind of stress them. Because whenever you put people in those kind of situations, I mean, there's a lot of fun that's happening. But at the same time, there's things that you didn't know. And I intentionally made it to where like the the schedule wasn't well known it was kind of oh yeah we're gonna do this we're gonna do that and every, there were some people real stressed out about that situation so here's the thing is that worry reveals something about you there's the you that you want everybody to know right that there's the you that you try your hardest to kind of put up in front of everybody and you say okay this is the real me and then there's the worry you and what I've discovered is that worry shows us what we're devoted to as a matter of fact the emotion worry is determined by your devotion. The things that you're devoted things, the, thing, the, the things that you have your eyes on, the things that you're really, really concerned about, those are the things that you worry about. Now, that just makes sense, right? I mean, you're, you're not worried about how I'm going to pay for my kid's education. You're not. You, you might be concerned about it. 
You, you, might, you, might, even, you might even pray about it. And, and that doesn't mean that you don't like me. It doesn't mean that you don't care about me. It doesn't mean any of those things. But here's the truth. You're not leave, losing sleep over it. I may be losing sleep, but you're not losing sleep. Now, why don't you lose sleep over how I'm going to pay for my kid's education? Because you're not devoted to my kids, right? So you know what that tells us? Now, just think about this because th this is going to be the theme. Th this, I want you to grab this earlier. What that tells us is that if we can shift our devotion to something that we know is going to be faithful, if we can move our devotion to something that we know that's going to fulfill us, something that's going to constantly be there, then what happens is that we will find that we begin to worry less. Because if you can get to the place where you start looking at all the situations that are going on in your life, the same way you look at my kids' education, you, would, you kind of walk around going, hey, man, I ain't got nothing to worry about, worry about. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus tells us that if we can shift our devotion, if we can just kind of move our devotion over to this situation, and everybody in the room, we all want to worry less. And if we can just move it to the place to where we get to the, to the point where we're actually devoted to the right one, then we will find ourselves worrying less. So Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talks a little bit about worry here, and this is kind of where I want to go. Matthew 6, we're going to begin in verse 24. Jesus says, and he's got this group of people, this large group of people, right? This is the Sermon on the Mount. Those of you that are a little familiar with Bible and things like that, this is the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is teaching, and he says, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one, and he will love the other. Or he will be, in what's that word? Devoted to the one and despise the other. Now, Jesus, what, 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 are you, what, what are you talking about? What, what, what are we saying here? He says, you cannot serve both God and money. Now, I find this kind of interesting, and, and most of us in the room should find this kind of interesting, because Jesus, some 2,000 years ago, as he's talking to this crowd, and he's about to in, in, embark on this conversation about worry, and the first thing he does is he talks about you cannot serve both God and money. You see, because he understood the same, the same way that we understand today that money is one of those big things. It's one of those things that kind of top out. If there's going to be something that we're going to worry about, we seem to worry about finances. The latest poll, I just checked it yesterday to make sure that I kind of knew where we were at. 64% of Americans, 64% of Americans, their biggest worry is money. It's their finances. How am I going to do this? What, what am I going to do with, 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 my, with my finances? Do, am I going to have enough finances? How am I going to pay the bills that I have? How, what am I going to do with the future? I, it, it, it's all about money. Now, to be fair, listen, listen, you, you got to hear this because your translation may say you cannot serve both God and money, but some of your translations say you cannot serve both God and mammon, right? Now, what exactly is that mammon? Mammon, it's translated, it means stuff. So Jesus is saying you can't serve or you can't be devoted to both God and stuff. And then in verse 25, he says, therefore. Now, anytime you have a therefore, you got to find out what it's there for, right? I mean, that's just kind of, the, it makes sense. If, if, you, if you run into a therefore, then you need to stop and say, okay, why is it that he just said therefore? Because what he's doing is he's connecting two thoughts. And what he's essentially saying is he says, I just told you that you cannot worry, you, you cannot serve both God and stuff. So therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Whoa, whoa, Jesus, stop, stop. About my life? You would think that out of all the things that we could worry about, that would be the one thing that you could worry about is, is your life. But here's the struggle with this situation, because Jesus would tell us, he would say, no, 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 you don't need to worry about your life. And we ask him, well, could you be more specific? And he talks to the audience that he has there, and this is what he says. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body or what you will wear. So Jesus says, I know that you're wondering about what you're going to eat, because this was a hand-to-mouth society. Right? I mean, they, they, they didn't have freezers and they didn't have, and, and plus they didn't have a whole lot of stuff anyway. So they just didn't have an abundance of stuff that was put away so that they could say, you know what, I've got enough. I'm okay with what's going on. This was a hand to mouth. So you ended up getting something, you ate it. And you went to get it the day that you needed it. It was just the way things went. So it wasn't unusual for them to get to a place where they would be very worried about what they were going to eat. And then Jesus says, and don't worry about what you're going to wear. Clothes were constantly wearing out. And Jesus says, I understand, but don't worry. Now, I want you to notice something, because this is very important. Jesus doesn't say that those things aren't important. He just says, don't worry about them. Amen. Basically, he says, listen, listen, listen. Just take a step back. 
And if you were talking to us, most of us don't worry about the food that we're going to eat. Matter of fact, most of us could stand and eat less. But, but nonetheless, we don't worry about the food that, 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 that we're going to eat. We don't worry about the clothes that we wear. But he would, he would tell us, don't worry about your retirement. Don't worry about whether or not you're going to find a job or if you're going to keep a job. Don't worry about whether or not your, your prodigal son or your prodigal daughter was going to come back. Don't worry about your marriage. Don't worry about your health. Don't worry about your life. Now, please hear me say this because th th this, is, this is very important. He's not saying those things are not important. It's just that they're not the most important. Listen to what he says as he goes on. <clears throat> he says, is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? So basically what he's saying is I just want you to step back for a little bit. I want you to look at the things that you're worried about. Isn't life more important than retirement? Isn't life more important than your job? Isn't life more important than your health? Isn't life more imp important than the person you marry or your bank account or whether or not your kids do right? Those are all components of life. But they're not life. See, the problem with our society today is that we have made that life. Today, I, I, I participated in a, in, a, in a memorial service for Tony Scherzer. Some of you may know Tony Scherzer. He, he's been in the area forever, and he was part owner of Nip and Tuck. You probably had some sort of run-ins with him at times and things like that. He was an incredibly faithful man, an incredibly in, a man of integrity. And it was interesting as we sat there and we watched his slideshow, and it was going on and, and, and everything. And, and, and he's holding, you know, grandbabies. He's holding great-grandbabies. He's around family and everything else. And then at the end, it says the best things in life are not things. This is at the end of someone's life. This is at the celebration of life. And at that point, it wasn't a celebration of all the things that he had amassed. It wasn't a celebration of, of, of the business that he built. It wasn't a celebration of, of the cars or the houses that he acquired. It was a celebration of the people that he brought around him and the lives that he affected. So many people got up and said, oh my goodness, if it weren't for Tony Scherzer, then my life would have been different. He set me on the right path. He gave me good advice time and time and time again. So Jesus says, do not worry about your life, to which most of us are still kind of reeling and going, what do you mean, do not worry about your life? And then Jesus says something way out of line. Look at this. Look at this. He says, look at the birds of the air, to which if you were in the congregation, if you were in that group at that moment, you probably would have raised your hand and said, whoa, 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 whoa. look at the birds of the air. What do you mean? Look, I don't have time to look at the birds of the air. I need a job. Jesus, I don't have time to look at the birds there. I, I, I need to, I, I'm watching my, re, my retirement melt away. Jesus, I don't have time to look at the birds of the air. I'm not getting any younger. I got to find a man. I got to find a woman. I got I to get married. I got to get things taken care of. What do you mean, look at the birds of the air? My spouse just told me that she's leaving me. No offense, Jesus, but look at the birds, birds of the air. No one says that. My life's falling apart. I have a right to be, to be worried about things, right? Come on, you, you felt justified. As a matter of fact, all of us feel justified in the things that we worry about. Whatever the struggle is, whatever it is that you bring here and you lay at the foot and you say, this is the thing that I'm so stressed out about, you feel extremely justified in worrying about that. And I think at that point, Jesus would say, whoa, 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 stop. Take a breath. Take a breath. Now look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns. If he were speaking to, to, to us today, he would say, they do not have 401ks or they do not prepare for the future. They don't help their kids to have a safe and secure start. As a matter of fact, have you ever looked at the birds of the air? They build their nest at the highest place that they can. And then whenever the birds get to the point where it's time to go, the, 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 the mommy and daddy bird just kind of push them out and say, good luck. <laughs> Try that parenting plan. <laughs> so Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They don't do any of the things that you do. None of the things. And, and, and listen, don't, don't misunderstand this. Jesus isn't saying don't work hard. He's not saying don't prepare for the future. He's not saying just chill. Ride, ride the wave that you're given, man. 
That's not what he's saying. He's saying, go and do all the things that you're doing. The birds don't make any of the plans. They don't have budgets. They don't have savings. They're not responsible like you. And yet, look at this, and yet your heavenly father feeds them. And here's the question. Are you not much more valuable than they? In other words, what he's asking those that are in attendance, and he's asking us, don't you believe that you're more valuable than a bird? Do you believe that you're more valuable than a bird? You know, a couple weeks ago, we looked at the fact that we, out of all of God's creation, are created, and, and we are the image bearers. So out of all of God's creation, if there's anyone that God would, 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 would be in favor of, if there's anyone that God would, would set aside and say, listen, I love you, I care for you, I will take care of you, it's us. So what Jesus is telling us is he's telling us, he's telling us how we can live with uncertainty. He says what you need to do is you need to focus on the fact that your heavenly Father loves you. He's not saying be irresponsible. Please hear me say that because I know so many people that take this verse and they take it completely wrong and they say, you know what? God says, look at the birds of the air and they don't sow, they don't read, they don't do any of those things. So I just need to go ahead and sit back and just let life happen to me. Yes, I need a job, but someone will call me and they'll give me a job. Yes, I, I need to pay my rent, but it'll be okay. The, a check will show up and it, it, it'll be there. Everything will be fine. See, this isn't some sort of a case, sirrah, sirrah, whatever will be, what will be. This is God inviting us to, he's inviting us to trust him, to trust our heavenly father. See what he says, he says, sow and reap, store up in barns, do whatever needs to be done. Fill out the applications, knock on the doors, study hard, work hard, do your best, set goals, take good care of yourself. But then take a breath and say, God loves me. He loves me. He cares for the birds. He loves me. Verse 27, look at this. He says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? That's a good question, right? How many of you just by worrying have, have ever made it to where your life would be longer? As a matter of fact, let, let me just ask you this. How many of you by worrying have made life better? Okay, let me, let me ask it a different way. How many of you by worrying are really fearful? Oh, let me put it a different way. How many of you by worrying are worried that you've shortened your life? <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, most, most medical folks tell us that worry affects us in a very, very detrimental way. And it puts us in a situation to where it actually takes years off of our life. So you can literally say that worry is a waste of time. You can literally say that because worry, every time that you worry, you are wasting time. So Jesus says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? So what do we do? I mean, you can't just stop worrying. For some of us in the room, that'd be like stop breathing. <laughs> you just can't. What, what, what am I supposed to do? Right? Come on. What Jesus tells us, listen, what he tells us is that what you need to do is you need to change your devotion. You need to take a look at the things. What am I so stressed out about? What am I so worried about? Because the truth is there's a lot of things in the world that are happening that you're not worried about because you're not devoted to them. And if you take your devotion and you move it to the place where it belongs, then you will find that you worry less. I'm not going to tell you that you won't worry at all. You're human, and I believe that just in the fallen state that you are, you will worry. But if you can move it to that place where your devotion is in him, and not just in him, but in what he will do, and come to a place where you trust what he will do, then you will worry less. Listen to what he says. And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Ouch. Really, did you have to go there, Jesus? You see what he did? He pointed out the big issue, the big problem when it comes to, to, to worry. 
See, the issue for worry is faith. The issue for worry is devotion. He says, whatever it is that you have your focus on, whatever it is that you're trying to manipulate, and everybody in the room, we all have our desires and our hopes, and we kind of think, okay, this is the way this has got to turn out. Lord, I know what's best for my daughter. I know exactly the way you need to do this, and you need to make sure you take care of this, and you do it this way, and it's got to happen this way. I know what's best for my, my marriage. I know what's best for my husband. And I think you need to really take care of these things, God. And that's not trusting him. That's telling him what to do. Trusting him is saying, Lord, I know that you know what's best. And I know that there's the factor of if they get a decision in it too, and they don't always make good decisions. I wish they'd make better decisions, but they don't. But God, I want to trust you. I'm going to trust that you're going to take care of this situation. So the question is, will I trust you? my heavenly father will you trust your heavenly father see this is where most of us get hung up right come on this is it see see the truth is is that we believe that god can but we don't believe that god will to which jesus says just trust him but lord i've been trying now wait a second are you trying are you trying to get him to do what you want to do and he's not doing it but you were trusting that he would do what it is that you want to do. Come on, right? I mean, in Western Christianity, I hate to say this, but we've, we've built this weird faith gospel, this weird thing where we're in control. We're the ones that are in charge. It's somehow, some way that if we could just find a verse and then we could believe hard enough, God's going to do exactly what it is that we want to do. And I'm telling you, all throughout the scripture, that is not the way that God works. God does what God's going to do. And it works the way that God wants it to work, not necessarily the way that you want it to work. And oftentimes, by the end of life or somewhere in life, you're sitting there and you're looking at it. Oh, God, this is much better. I like this. But you know what? 80%, no, that's, a, that's just a number I pulled out. But 80% <laughs> of the people that I know, because they never resign themselves to the place where they trust what God is doing. And they say, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I believe that it's going to be the best thing for me. Then they end up in this, this pit of despair and this pit of worry. And they're sinking constantly. And they never see the good that is coming out of the situation. And every time I talk to them, oh, yeah, I got this. And I got this. Oh, it's so bad. I wish God. Oh, yeah. And we start blaming God. And we get angry at God. And, you know, it's all God. And the whole time God's going, would you just trust me? Just take my hand. Walk with me through this. Watch what I want to do. I want to do something not only in your life but through you. I want to do something to bless the people around you. Will you just let me do something? But Lord, you don't understand. I've got this terrible disease. I know you've got that terrible disease. I'm not new to this game. What are you going to let me do through that? Will you just trust me? Let me ask, what if you could wake up every day and live your life as if you were absolutely confident that God was your heavenly father and that you could trust him? What would life look like for you? If you could wake up every day just believing, knowing he's my heavenly father <laughs> and he loves me and I can trust him. How would you, li how would you have lived today differently? See, if we could ever get to that place, we would not worry less because God was doing what we wanted him to do. We would worry less because we trusted the one who was doing it. Do you see the difference there? Big difference. All of us have ideas as to the way God ought to do things. But if we'd ever get to the place where we just trust the one who's doing it, it's okay. I got this. It's not case or raw, or raw. It's not sit back and don't do anything. Man, do the things you need to do. Go out and fill out the applications. Go out there and knock on the doors. Go out there and ask her out. Go out there and do whatever it is that you need to do. Do the things that you need to do to move forward. Save. Invest. Do those things. But when it doesn't go the way you want it to go, don't worry about it. Trust him. And when your devotion is towards him, 
you will worry less. I love, most of you, and I've used this illustration a couple of different times, but I, 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 love, I love the movie Narnia. How many of you have seen the movie Narnia? It was actually a book before. I don't know if you knew that or not. C.S. Lewis, Chronicles of Narnia. You guys knew that as well. How many of you have read the book? Have read the book? Oh, wow, more have read the book than seen the, wow, that's cool. You probably read the book and said there's no way that the movie could live up. There's just no way. So there's this incredible scene. There's this place where Susan and Edmund and Peter and Lucy, and they're all, you know, they, they, they went into the wardrobe, and, and they're into, the, into the, this fantasy land, and they, they meet up with the beavers, right? You, you, you remember the beavers, like the talking beavers? And they're pretty big. They'd scare me. And, and they're meeting with the beavers, and they're talking with the beavers, and they kind of go into the beaver's house, and, and they're talking about, you know, the king Aslan and the lion and everything else. They're talking about how he's just this mighty force, this mighty fierce thing. And at some point, Susan begins to get a little bit concerned about this because all of us would get concerned. You know, oh, yeah, Aslan, he'll, be, he'll come and he'll show up. He'll do what he's supposed to do. And Susan looks over and says, is he safe? I mean, if I'm going to meet this great lion, is, is he safe? And I love what Mr. Beaver says. He kind of looks over at Susan, laughs a little bit and says, safe? No. But he's good. That's your God, by the way. We want a safe God. We want a God that's not going to send us down a tough road, a difficult path. We want things to be smooth and easy. That's what we want. He's not a safe God. He's never been a safe God. But he's always been a good God. And he always cares for you. And he loves you. And if you'll just get that into your mind, he loves me more than the birds of the air, more than whatever it is that you can, you can put into that slot. He loves you, and he will do good in your life, and you can trust him. And if you will do that, you will worry less. Amen. Those moments and those times that I have had those, that, that privilege of being there, I love that. Don't you love that? It's going to be okay. And you know people, right? You know people like that. There, there are people in your life that you get around and you go, man, they're so faith, faith-filled. It's just amazing. You know, like the whole world's falling down around them and you're going, how do you do this? And, oh, God's going to take care of it. You just want to slap them. Are you kidding me? If I were in your situation, I'd be freaking out. I said, no, God's going to take care of it. How do you know? Because he's a good God. And he loves me. And it may not turn out the way that I want it to turn out. I may actually lose my life. I may lose all that I have. But he's still a good God. Here's what I want you to do today. Well, this week. You have to write it down. And, and, and here's, here's what I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to trick myself and think that you're actually going to do this. But I'm going to give it to you anyway. <laughs> and, and I hope that you'll do it. Will you do me a favor this week? Would you just take a little notepad, and every time that you worry, would you write that down? What are you worried about? Just, just do it. Whatever it is, whatever the, that brings up anxiety in your heart, whatever it is that wakes you up at 2 in the morning, right? You, I mean, you went to sleep not thinking about anything. Just went to sleep. And then all of a sudden at 2 a.m., you're cold sweats. Whatever that is, I want you to write it down. Would you write that down? Because here's what that exercise will do. It will show you what it is that you're devoted to. Now, here's the scary thing. If you decide to do this, God might actually show you some of the things you're devoted to, which means he might bring up some things that, that you weren't really excited about dealing with. But it's a great exercise because all of a sudden you'll see what it is that's getting in the way between you and your heavenly father, between you and trusting him with all of your heart. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go and every day, every day I turn this off too early, I got to go back and... And, and get the exact scripture. I know it's Matthew chapter 20 or chapter 6, verses 24 through 34. So every day, read those, those passages. Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 through 34. Every single day, Matthew chapter 6, verses 34, or 24 through 34. And then lastly, come back next week. Let's take a look at the next installment. Let's see what Jesus has to say about worry and how it is that we can get to the place to where we worry less. Everybody in the room, you'd love to worry less, right? Come on. 
You would love to worry less. So let's come back next week. So do those three things. Will you do those three things for me? I'm looking for you to write down all the things that you're worried about. I'm looking for you to read that passage of Scripture and then come back next week. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity for us to be here. Lord, I thank you that, that you are so real. That God, you know what is at the base of our hearts. You know what it is that we struggle with. You know what it is that we need to hear. And God, I thank you that you care for us enough to address these issues. You don't leave us alone to wallow in our own sorrow or in our own worry. You don't sit there and look at us and say, why are you guys doing that? But you give us answers and you show us what it is that we need to do. And God, I pray for each one of us that we would be people that would learn to trust you with everything that we have understanding that those things that we're so worried about, those are not life. They're not. The truth is you came to give us life, and life is found in this incredible relationship with you. I pray that, God, we would focus on that, and we would be devoted to you. Please, Lord. For, Lord, I ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. We're going to sing one more song before we go, and uh, please sing out with us. We are free tonight, and now we're free from worry.
します。